Hi everyone. What I'm going to share with you my talk uh, regarding all of dual antiviral therapy uh, and update. So here is my disclosure. I think everyone have seen the the trend, the current trend, and the future trend uh, in terms of simplifying the treatment uh, by reducing a number of drug exposure, either reduce the number of the drug in the regimen from three to two, as we familiar with the term of dual therapy, or reduce uh, in a dose frequency. So try to have a long acting injectable antiretroviral agents that might be able to be given to, uh, longer than every two months up to every six months, or even by implanting uh, a device to give uh, the medicine to once a year. Now, why is we are gearing to uh, dual therapy? Uh, I think uh, this is uh, a theoretical uh, approach and some of the uh, rationale uh, approach. So the first thing is potentially to reduce uh, the side effects uh, of uh, ARV uh, to reserve future options and uh, perhaps a cost saving. So this is the estimation uh, from from a, a US uh, scenario. So uh, it might save uh, more than 3 billion if 25% of currently suppressed persons switch to DTG plus lamivudine as a maintenance therapy. So let me give you a, a, a very uh, big uh, picture uh, of the um, timelines uh, of the development of HIV therapy. You can see that uh, when we're talking about uh, combination uh, antiretroviral therapy, uh, previously known as HART or highly active uh, antiretroviral therapy, you can see that that's before 2012. We're still talking about three drug combination regimen until recently in the last uh, 10 years or so. So we start, we have a better new drugs, better option, and, and start uh, exploring dual therapy. And dual therapy has uh, recently been approved for clinical use, including the long acting ART. Now, what are the knowledge we have uh, in decade ago and uh, recently uh, in the last 10 years? You can see that if you look at the information based on what we have uh, of the ARV option from 1987 and 1997. So you see that because most of the treatment option is based on nucleoside analog liver transcriptase inhibitor. So definitely, uh, even right now, we no one uh, you know, recommend to go with monotherapy, but the previous uh, dual therapy based on nucleoside and RTI oh, is, is really uh, not a good way to go because it's uh, be able to develop the drug resistant uh, with less than a half a, a half a year. Uh, so that's why uh, in the past uh, several decades, these three drug regimens uh, are, is the main uh, recommendation direction. Now this uh, slides uh, coming from clinicaloption.com. Uh, can uh, convince us very nicely that in the uh, yellow uh, group of ARV, in this case, integrase inhibitor compared to the other, 
Uh, in green is non is the NRTI, the nucleoside. In blue is a non-nucleoside, liver transcriptase inhibitor, inhibitor, and the orange is the protease inhibitor. And you can see that as a monotherapy, uh, this, the potency of integrase inhibitor uh, agent is really uh, aggressive or better than others. So it's at least more than two log uh, suppression up to two and a half log. And more interestingly, uh, this is also uh, hard to develop drug resistant, particularly uh, doluticavir, DTG, and beticavir. So the chance to develop in the prospective randomized controlled clinical trial cohort is only 0.1% uh, to develop drug resistant compared to NNRTI and other groups. That's why. Uh, when we're talking about the current dual therapy, currently is not the one that we have negative impression in the last uh, few decades of dual therapy. So dual nucleoside is not as what we are saying about dual DTG-based or dual reticular-based uh, dual therapy. So the suppression and durability is rarely very well, significant different. Now, what are the, the dual therapy has been approved uh, recently? So DTG3TC, DTG lepivirine, and uh, uh, carbotecavir and lepivirine, long-acting inject injectable ARV also has been approved. So this is the the information of the approval, uh, in this case, uh, based on the data in the US FDA, you see that uh, DTG 2 c uh, back in 2019, uh, DTG Lupivirine uh, back in uh, 2017, even, even earlier, and then the long acting injectable carbotecavir and Lupivirine, it's just uh, uh, about a year uh, and so ago. So it's in January 2021. Now, uh, the reason that my topic is going to focus mainly on oral uh, dual therapy, because in terms of long acting injectable ART, I would say that uh, implementation in this low median income country, it remains a problem in terms of cost is very high. So e equity to access to uh, long acting injectable ART is remain a problem in low mid in income country, not only in Asia, but global, globally. Now let me uh, remind you a number of uh, um, a milestone trial. Uh, a benchmark trial. So this is the uh, Gemini 1 and Gemini 2 uh, to show whether DTG3TC can be as a first line therapy for naive population as compared to uh, a triple therapy DTG based treatment. And this data look at the week 96. So uh, it's about two years after initiating the, the randomization. And you can see that um, dual therapy DTG3TC in this Gemini trial uh, has met criteria of non inferiority uh, as compared to triple therapy DTG, FTC, and TDF uh, up to 96 weeks. Uh, interestingly, and this is, has been uh, mentioned in the guideline, that when you break down, and this is a post hoc analysis uh, by baseline HIV RNA level or CD4 baseline level, you can see that a dual therapy uh, not as good as a tri triple therapy in a, a more advanced or high viral load. Uh, 
individuals. So in this case, in green is a dual therapy, and in red is a triple therapy. Uh, in the subgroup of uh, individuals have baseline value load greater than 500,000. And you see that the, sim the simple cycle is small. Um, yeah, but at least uh, you see the uh, difference is 69% and, and versus 80%, and also confirm uh, with a, a bit larger sample size, uh, it's a subgroup in this group called uh, baseline low CD4 uh, at 200 CD4 count or below is uh, very similar in terms of 68% versus uh, 87%. Therefore, um, now what the uh, international guidelines uh, has been recommended on first line therapy. And you see that the US DHHS guideline also include DTG 3TC as is one of the uh, option, uh, not the preferred, but the, you know, it's an option. And, uh, and the, uh, the European uh, guideline also include this dual therapy uh, in the first line option, uh, in particularly WHO as well. Now, in terms of the, the guideline, what uh, is not recommended if you, in uh, which individual should not consider to use DTG 3TC regimen, uh, that, that are the those individuals with baseline value load higher than 500,000 uh, copy per meal, those with hepatitis B co-infection, because uh, you should not use this regimen as the 3TC will be just a monotherapy for hepatitis B. And uh, for whom that you want to do a rapid a one day ART or same day ART, uh, without genotypic resistance uh, in country or situation that you have a high background resistance of 3TC or high background of hepatitis B co-infection. So you should avoid this regimen. Now, how about the other uh, uh, option in terms be beyond the first line therapy in naive population is uh, in experience individual biological well suppressed and should uh, DTG consider as a switch option. Uh, this is a Tango study. Um, and uh, the result is at 48 weeks. And you can see that with the FDA snapshot analysis, uh, intention to treat result here, you see that uh, both option in green is the two drugs, uh, DTG 3DC, and in orange is the three drugs, uh, tap based ART uh, is almost identical, 93% efficacy. And this is also, again, uh, has met the non inferiority uh, efficacy criteria. The other dual therapy, actually this dual therapy has been approved as a, a switch option uh, two years earlier than the DTG 3TC is the DTG lepivirine in the SWOT one and two uh, trial with the sample size at here you can see that's about uh, 500 uh, per arm. Um, and this is the result. To switch to uh, DTG repivirine at week 100, the vitreal suppressed rate is 93% versus, uh, just a second. Uh, if you switch to, this is switch early uh, and then switch from three drug to two drug and continue two drug, you have 89%. You continue the triple therapy for another years and then switch, you have uh, 93%. But again, this is uh, it's a non inferiority uh, result. 
What about uh, the real world setting of dual therapy? In this case, it's DTG, 3TC based dual ART. Um, as you can see here, it's the inform uh, various uh, cohort and countries with uh, sample size vary from uh, quite small from 59% uh, to uh, 966, uh, I don't know, 95 cases up to a uh, uh, thousand cases. And you can see that it's very consistent in terms of uh, effectiveness. So is the effectiveness is more than 93% up to 100%. The average of follow-up in this uh, uh, effectiveness to cohort is from half a year to three years. So I tried to look at, you know, just a few hours before my talk, I, I tried to look at, is there any very recent data in to address some of the um, concern that we keep asking about whether when you reduce a number of ARV from three drugs to two drugs in biological suppressed individuals, is there any risk of uh, the increasing of immune activation or switching to dual therapy? So there are two papers. Uh, I just select those uh, published uh, recently this year. So it's just few few months, a few weeks ago. Uh, so let's start with the first one with the uh, sample size of 151. Uh, this is a randomized control study from uh, a Spanish group. Uh, published in, in, in CID. Uh, they randomized uh, these 151 into uh, same uh, you know, continuing three drug regimen, or switch to DTG 3DC, or switch to DTG Dalunavir Kobe, uh, uh, Kobe stack. So it means uh, comparing two, two arm of two drug regimen versus continuing the three drug regimen and for up at 48 and 96 weeks. Uh, they measure uh, a number of parameters, very interesting in terms of um, the slope of the CD4 response. So they call it as the immune recovery. They measure quite a, a intensive uh, immune activation marker and also looking at the HIV reservoir, so also associated HIV DNA and, and spike uh, HIV RNA. And uh, the, the conclusion here is that there's no difference in these three uh, major categories. So there's no difference in immune recovery, immune activation or inflammation, and HIV reservoir. Uh, the other study from France, it's a, a, a quite a smaller uh, cohort uh, looking at, looking at uh, up to 24 months after switching from three drug to two drug. Um, there are one vertical failure in these uh, 14 individuals. The conclusion is by simplification from three drug to two drug uh, option was associated with the uh, macrophages uh, activation, so mainly just one uh, parameter. So the other uh, marker is not uh, different. So uh, again, so they, they, they said that this is a small sample size need to be confirmed with a larger prospective cohort. What about the another uh, effectiveness uh, results? So based on these two paper, one is from the uh, Washington DC, the US DC. So with sample size 310, a treatment experience adult uh, with biological suppress at baseline. Um, so it's quite a small number, uh, only 53 switched to two drugs and 257 switched to three drugs. Um, there's a, 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 ten, a trend of uh, high biological failure in two drugs. Again, this is non uh, this non randomized. It's a cohort observation, so be careful about the interpretation. And uh, the other cohort from Spain, 
241 uh, sample size. And they found that for those with uh, uh, viral suppressed at baseline and you switch to uh, dual therapy, either DTG3TC or DTG uh, boosted dalunavir, the uh, average virtual suppress rate at 48 week is up to 90%. So, uh, but if it's uh, not virtual suppressed at baseline, the success less is uh, less than 60%. So be, be careful about that. So uh, the other uh, concern that you need to be uh, taken to the account is the, although it's a drug interaction between uh, other drug class and, and DTG is, uh, is very limited, but uh, don't forget to, to check it before uh, giving different multi-drug in, in that individual. Uh, how about the implementation in Asia? Um, so is uh, the DTG2TC is not available as a single pill in, in low middle income in Asia, but available in high, mid, high income country in Asia, like the, uh, Korea, uh, Japan, and others. So uh, same as the DTG lapivirin, um, and even worse with the long acting injectable ART. So in Thailand, uh, DTG 3TC is an alternative first line regimen. Uh, will be considered particularly with uh, individual with poor renal function uh, and make sure that there's uh, no hepatitis B co-infection or any risk or history of uh, 3TC drug resistant. We don't have single tablet regimen in uh, of uh, DTG 3TC. So we have to use a separate pill. Um, DTG lepivirin is less commonly uh, used in Thailand. Again, it needs to be a separate pill. It's not have a single tablet uh, formulation available. So, so before I end my talk, there are some key questions remained for two drug ART. Uh, first is the efficacy of uh, dual ART at very really high viral load and low CD4 count. Is that still a concern? Because there's not much information after that uh, randomized uh, registration of trial data. The, the other thing is uh, when, if in the setting that you have to have as a single tablet triple drug regimen, uh, over the risk benefit ratio, uh, compared to dual therapy and the cost and convenience uh, to use, uh, that need to be consideration as well. The risk of resistance with suboptimal adherence or the resistant transmitted virus, uh, is there any concern again, the 3TC and repivirin in particular? The other, uh, a consideration is that the CNS and a genital shedding uh, issue is the, do we have enough information? Uh, persistent information in the la larger RCT, as I showed to you, the, the result is might not be a concern, but a small sample size trial might need to be confirmed. Thank you very much for your kind attention.